So Frank, um, day one, Sapphire and TechEd combined. Um, they've been talking a lot about mobility, comes in two pieces. Um, first of all about the platform and then what uh, they think about the strategy. What do you think about the platform play? Um, I think the platform play is, uh, is interesting here. Right. I know that we've talked uh, you know, recently about um, SAP trying to make money off the platform versus uh, off the applications um, and broadening the support for that. And I think what we heard last night was that uh, SAP is realizing that mobile development is, uh, is quite a bit different than uh, traditional uh, mm -hmm. software development for desktops or uh, server-based computing, and that they really need to open up the infrastructure to a much broader group of developers, which many times is uh, you know, four or five person shops um, that are going to develop uh, you know, applications for a small market or niche applications uh, to really get the adoption of, uh, of, uh, of mobile apps for SAP uh, you know, out there into the larger community. So uh, I know they've been struggling with that, but we heard some good, uh, some good sounds last night um, in our discussions with SAP executives that it seems they, uh, they're getting the message uh, that they need to move in that direction and uh, hopefully we'll see that uh, come to fruition. But they're not there yet, are they, by any stretch? I mean, at the moment what they're really talking about is mobile applications developed on the back of uh, the Sybase Unwired platform, which to my mind is a fairly limited audience at this moment in time given some of the licensing issues around there. I mean, would you agree with that? I, I would agree with that and I think that um, uh, again, it seems like SAP is in a transition now. They talked about producing a sandbox environment where developers could uh, develop their applications uh, without having a license to SUP and then at some point submitting it uh, for certification on SUP, um, so kind of lowering the barrier. Um, but again, I think this is all in transition now and we'll just have to see uh, how this plays out. They also talked about possibly allowing uh, new mobile apps to be developed without uh, SUP in more of an open environment, but, but they haven't gone there yet. So again, it's kind of an evolving picture and we'll have to see where that leads. Do, do you think that given SAP's position in the marketplace and given the number of customers that they've got, given the potential for the numbers of users that they could reach, even though they're relatively slow in the marketplace, perhaps compared to one or two others, do you think they've got time to be able to flesh out this strategy to, uh, in the way in which they're describing it this time? Or do you think they're late? Or I mean, how would you characterize it? Well, again, I think you know my interest in SAP is um, uh, you know, like you said, they're not necessarily the first or the quickest or the most innovative for uh, you know leading edge applications, but they have. I mean, this is the largest business software uh, provider in the world. They have the largest installed base, and there's an enormous amount of uh, data that is locked up within SAP systems. Yeah. If that can be liberated mm. uh, to provide uh, you know greater access or uh, you know more useful application uh, through mobile devices. Uh, through cloud computing and other ways, um, that's a tremendous resource the customers are going to, uh, to gain value from. So the question is, is SAP going to provide all of those applications, or are they going to uh, you know, further open up to a larger development community? And it certainly seems like they want to move in, in the right direction, but certainly if they don't do it, somebody else is going to do it and they're going to be left behind. Yeah, sure, and um, I got the impression that rather than living off the back of champagne pricing, which, is, <laughs> which they like to talk about, yeah. um, they're maybe going to cover pricing, with which we'd be uh, somewhat more happy. Well, I mean, the pricing thing's always going to be an issue with, with them, but they seem to be making some of the right uh, noises as far as that was concerned. That, that's right, and, and you know, with, uh, with any large <laughs> and, and well-established company like SAP, there's, there's the way they've made money in the past, versus the way they could make money in the future. And um, you know, I think the term you've used is the antibodies within SAP. I mean, they've been used to making money off of uh, uh, you know, large uh, software license sales and uh, you know, recurring revenue streams for many, many years, but, but that world is changing. I mean, customers now want you know, quicker consumption of uh, applications that are more consumer-like, and um, you know, SAP you know, needs to make that transition you know, to a new world. So, uh, uh, they're making the right sounds. They seem to be uh, wanting to move in the right direction. You know whether they can make that transition. We'll just have to see how it plays out in the coming uh, months and years. And what about um, the strategy as uh, Jim Schnabel uh, articulated it this morning? I mean, what's your impression there? Well, I think it's uh, you know we talked about this a little bit earlier that um, 
you know, this is interesting coming after, what is it, six months since Orlando or yeah. four or five months since Orlando. Uh, the message there was very similar, but it was much more dominated by HANA and, uh, you know, large uh, in-memory computing uh, sales, which again, you know, is our large uh, license sales and, and large projects, which is very much in SAP's uh, tradition. Uh, this time, uh, the HANA piece was still there, but there was a much more balanced emphasis on uh, the cloud, yeah. uh, mobile apps, yeah. uh, in-memory computing, and then enhancements to the core, to, again, to free the legacy uh, value of, of the information that's contained there. So it was a much, I thought it was a much tighter presentation, and um, you know, there's some benefit to repetition. Um, in getting the message across. But I think, uh, you know, again, on paper and, uh, you know, on the keynote, uh, the strategy certainly sounds uh, attractive, and uh, of course, it's uh, proof is in the pudding as far as execution. Well, execution's always the thing, but I, um, I always think that if, if you can actually understand the messaging, then perhaps they actually understand what the hell they're talking about, which I don't, I wasn't convinced last time that they really knew what the heck they were doing. I think I'm more convinced now. I mean, do, do you feel more comfortable in that regard? I do feel more comfortable in this regard. Um, you know, SAP comes under a lot of criticism uh, by people like us, <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes we have to uh, take a step back and, and look at, uh, at what they're doing. They, they certainly have the right intention to move forward on behalf of their customers. Um, we'll be talking to some customers uh, here during the show, and we'll hear about how good they're doing. So we, we should be cautiously optimistic, is the, it would be the appropriate way, right? Always optimistic and always cautious. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much indeed, Frank. Thank you. Take care.